Hello and welcome to the episode 213 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Like every first of the month episode, today we'll cover stories from the Beatles' history happened on the 1st of August, and those that happened during the month without a specific date. Some of the highlights of the episode include an agreement for a TV special, a revolution in the recording history, and further recordings for Hey Jude. In early August 1960, the Royal Caribbean Steel Band, the resident band of the Jacaranda Coffee Bar in Liverpool, signed a contract for a lengthy residency in Hamburg, West Germany, leaving the club without notice. Alan Williams, a local manager who was acting as the de facto manager of the Silver Beatles, investigated the matter and landed a contract for Derry and the Seniors, one of the other bands he was taking care of. Soon, letters started to arrive with enthusiastic remarks on Hamburg and its nightlife, and with details of the business opportunities other local bands could enjoy overseas. Williams decided to send a second group over. The Silver Beetles were his last choice, but they were the only one readily available. Rory Storm and the Hurricanes were on tour in North Wales, Cass and the Casanovas were in Scotland backing Duffy Power, and Jerry and the Pacemakers refused the offer. Reluctantly, Williams asked the Silver Beetles. The lads agreed but they needed to find a drummer before leaving. When Williams wrote to Derry and the Seniors about the imminent coming of the Silver Beatles, the band wrote back complaining that such a bum group, quote-unquote, would spoil the scene for everyone else. On the 1st of August 1962, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed a lunchtime and an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. After the initial scouting on the 26th of July, see episode 207 for that, members of the management of the Manchester-based Granada Television were in attendance again during the evening performance. They were finally impressed enough to make up their minds and contact the band to arrange for a television crew to record part of the 22nd of August lunchtime concert for a TV special. Naturally, We'll cover that in episode 234 of What A Fab Day. In August 1963, Beatlemania was in full swing. Every engagement of the Beatles had by now become a dangerous and crazy affair for the band and their entourage, with their safety, and that of the public, being one of the first concerns of manager Brian Epstein when considering a booking offer. Could the Beatles safely reach the venue and be smuggled in without the fans knowing? Could they later escape said venue and reach their van to be driven away safely? Road manager Neil Aspinall would often be used as a human shield to protect the escape, but this would clearly not do. On the 1st of August 1963, the Beatles were at the Playhouse Theatre in Manchester to record show 11 and 12 for their BBC radio programme Pop Go The Beatles. The shows were broadcast, respectively, on the 27th of August and on the 3rd of September, both between 5 and 5.29 pm. The guests for show 11 were Cyril Davis' Rhythm and Blues All Stars, and the Beatles offered the performance of Oh My Soul, Don't Ever Change, Twist and Shout, She Loves You, Anna Go To Him, and A Shot of Rhythm and Blues. Brian Poole and the Tremolos were instead the guests of show 12, during which the Beatles performed From Me To You, I'll Get You, Money, That's What I Want, There's A Place, Honey Don't, with John Lennon singing the lead vocals, and Roll Over Beethoven. Lucille and Baby 2 were recorded but edited out of the broadcast. During the month of August in 1964, as we will see, the Beatles embarked in their first proper American tour. 32 shows in 26 dates, in 24 cities, over 34 days. Supported by the Bill Black Combo, the Exciters, the Righteous Brothers and Jackie DeShannon in all the dates, 
This was a real tour de force. It is remembered as the American tour of the band, just like the Britons considered the autumn 1963 tour the English tour. Scenes of Beatlemania were rampant and omnipresent, and a full report of all the incidents and data would probably fill a full book. During the month of August 1965, EMI staff producers George Martin, Ron Richards, John Burgess and DECA staff producer Peter Sullivan left their respective companies to form Associated Independent Recordings Limited, better known as AIR. This was a way for these experienced producers to find work through their own independent production company, tapping into higher fees and some royalty rewards for their work, rather than draw a fairly meager salary from their old companies, despite producing hit records. It was another recording industry revolution happened under Beatles' watch, so to speak. Technically, the move should have resulted in the substitution of George Martin with some other EMI staff member, but the label executives knew that the partnership was too successful to risk messing with it. And, on the other hand, neither Brian Epstein nor the band would have stood for a substitute in the studio. On the 1st of August 1965, the Beatles were at the ABC Theatre in Blackpool, to appear live on ABC Television's Blackpool Night Out, between 9.10 and 10.05 pm. It was the only live TV appearance that the band made to promote their new feature film, Help, with all the other shows having to use some clips from the film. After an afternoon for stage rehearsals, the Fabs went live with a performance of I Feel Fine, I'm Down, Act Naturally, Ticket to Ride, Yesterday, a solo performance by Paul, with the rest of the band leaving the stage, and Help. You'll find a link to the full performance, colorized, in the episode description. This time around, the band didn't take part to any comical sketch during the program. During the month of August 1966, the Beatles showed their appreciation for pirate radio stations inviting the two major players in that market to send a correspondent each to join the band's entourage on their next American tour. Radio Caroline sent Jerry Layton, while Radio London sent Kenny Everett. On the 1st of August 1966, Paul McCartney met David Frost again after their solo interview on the 15th of April 1964, detailed in episode 105 of this podcast. This time the aim was to tape an interview for BBC Radio's David Frost at the Phonograph, in which the programme host chatted with Paul, the personality guest, commenting on everyday matters while playing old and new records. The chat was taped at the BBC Broadcasting House in London and aired on the 6th of August between 12 noon and 1.30 pm. On the 1st of August 1967, George and Patty Harrison, Alexis Mardas and Neil Aspinall flew from London to Los Angeles. One of Patty's sisters was living in San Francisco and had decided to return to live in the UK. The party was to visit her, taking a chance for a Californian holiday. They stayed in a rented house in Beverly Hills, on Blue Jay Way. While waiting for their friend and former Beatles publicist Derek Taylor to arrive for a visit, George wrote Blue Jay Way on a Hammond S6 organ he found in the house. Exactly one year later, in 1968, the Beatles were at the Trident Studios in London for the second day in a row to continue working on Hey Jude. From 5 to 8 pm, Paul McCartney overdubbed his bass part and lead vocal on take one of the rhythm track. The other Beatles recorded backing vocals. Then, starting from 8 pm, a 36 piece orchestra overdubbed the arrangement that George Martin had prepared for the occasion, receiving £25 for it, about £440 in 2020 money. The name of the musicians have been lost 
but there were 10 violins, 3 violas, 3 cellos, 2 flutes, 1 contrabassoon, 1 bassoon, 2 clarinets, 1 contrabass clarinet, 4 trumpets, 4 trombones, 2 horns, 1 timpani, and 2 double basses. The classically trained musicians were also asked to contribute to the crescendo constituting the coda of the song, clapping their hands and singing the refrain, but at least one of them refused, walking away commenting, I'm not going to clap my hands and sing Paul McCartney's bloody song. On the 1st of August 1969, the Beatles were at work in the EMI studios. Between 2.30 and 10.30 pm, they recorded 23 takes of the rhythm track of Because, with George Martin on Baldwin's spinet harpsichord, John on electric guitar, and Paul on bass. Only three takes were actually complete. Ringo provided a gentle hi-hat accompaniment to keep time that was not used in the final mix, but that can be heard on one of the reissues of Abbey Road. Then, John, Paul and George started recording the harmony vocals taping the first of three sets of three voice choirs that were used in the final mix. It was the last time that the four Beatles began working on a new song together. Before closing the episode, allow me to thank you again for your support. Share this episode on your socials, if you like, and please visit www.simonmas.com support to learn more about all the things you can do. See you tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.